Good morning. Welcome to worship. We welcome also those who are with us online and encourage those folks to pull together a morsel of bread or something to drink for uh, communion, which we will do later in our service. You are welcome to stand as you are able as we sing our gathering hymn, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer. We're going to sing all three verses.
trying again. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. Please join us in singing the refrain.
Our first reading is from Genesis, the 15th chapter. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and as he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be ready for the Son of Man. He is coming in an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord. you may be seated. 
Well, I'm just wondering if there are some kids, and I know there are some, that would be willing to come up front. Would you come up front? Kind of shy, huh? Oh, we got one, all right. Yeah. Thanks for coming up. Yeah. What's your name? Clam. Clam, all right. So, do you have parents? Do you love them? Have you ever been afraid of them? Never? That's good. Because sometimes I was afraid of my parents. You know when? When I did something wrong and I thought I was going to be in trouble and I didn't know what the punishment would be. Then I was a little bit afraid of them. But I was lucky because I knew even if they punished me, you know, sent me to my room or something, they still loved me. And that was like the coolest, that they were going to be there and take care of me. And so God does this really cool thing. He gives his parents, and those parents learn to love us no matter how we come, what size we come in, or what personalities we have. And so, and God gives us other people in our lives to help us, like teachers. Like, what grade are you going to be in this fall? Kindergarten. Kindergarten, all right. So you're going to have kindergarten. How about you, Morgan? What grade are you in? 15th? 15th grade? <laughs> yeah, she's in college. She's a little older, but... But you know what? Even though all these other people are older, they're all kids too. Because to God, we're always a kid to him. But when we come to God, God's kind of like a parent to us in that what we have is, is God just loves us. Isn't that the best? He just loves us. And he says, when we pray to God, God listens to us. And God wants to help us. And so anytime you're afraid or you need help or you just need to talk to someone, you can always talk to your parents, but you can also talk to God. And he's going to help you out. Well, thanks for coming up. And I'm glad you have a good parent that you don't fear. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's good. Well, you can go back with your good parent. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Father, Jesus our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our Advocate. Years ago, I had a small dog, a little Schnauzer Terrier mix, and she would literally shake when she was afraid. Usually it was thunderstorms or fireworks that would scare her. And I would try to grab her, hold her, to try to soothe her and calm her down. And many times she would relax and stop shaking. Today we hear from God when he talks to Abram and Jesus to his disciples saying, do not be afraid. And what if anything makes you afraid? Well, I can tell you big bodies of water make me afraid. <laughs> I was told, and I never knew why, but finally my mom told me, she said, well, when you were about three, I would go to the end of the dock and jump off to be with my brothers, but the problem was is I sank. <laughs> and it didn't come back up. And so uh, my dad would have to come and fetch me out of the water. And my mom said, yeah, you wrecked a few pairs of your dad's shoes <laughs> by going into the water to snatch out. But I don't remember that, but my body does. My body remembers and tries to protect me. So um, I still, I had friends that I said, teach me how to swim. And they said, you're never going to swim until you learn to relax in the water. And it's like, I don't relax in the water. And so I can kind of swim and I kind of play in the water, but 
Uh, I won't be swimming the English Channel anytime soon, <laughs> that's for sure. Fear can take our freedom away from us. Fear, we can be nervous about it or we can avoid it and it can hold us captive. Fears can even taint our perceptions, our words, and our actions. We kind of live in this tension between fear and love with God. In the Bible, there's many times where it says, you know, the first, the first wisdom is fear of the Lord. And Martin Luther in the small catechism talks about the fear and the love we are to have for God. And when thinking of fearing God, it's kind of like when having that parent that when we're doing something wrong, we can fear God. But one of the things to that fear does is hopefully keeps us away from wanting to sin or to live bad lives. But I also think that when we love God and God loves us, we want to live differently. It's not just avoiding and being fearful, but being called into that loving relationship with God. God wants us to be in relationship with him, and he has good things planned for us. We all have guardians or parents in our life, and when we did something wrong, again, we kind of had this maybe trepidation or fear that we would get punished. But God's a good parent who never stops loving us. And even when we mess up, he keeps calling us back and saying, I forgive you, come on back. And he sent Jesus not only to be an example of what a well-lived life should look like, we know Jesus had compassion and love and generosity and helped others. And we can be that way in the world. We can be Christ-like to others. When people in the Bible come in contact with the supernatural, whether it's God or angels, they are naturally fearful. We think of the shepherds when they came to tell, the angels came to tell them about Jesus' birth. The first thing they said was, do not be afraid. And we hear Jesus today, do not be afraid, little flock, because God is going to give you the kingdom. And God has given us the kingdom. And we can come and approach God in prayer, in love, without fear, when we have Jesus. Because Jesus makes us righteous. Jesus puts us in a right relationship with God because our sins are forgiven. Pastor Mary Kay just did that with you a few moments ago. Your sins are gone. White as snow. I, yeah, I said the four letter word, snow. But that's how we are. And we can come in front of God. And we don't have to fear the wrath of God. Sin separates us from God, but Jesus connects us to God. Abraham believed God's promises and was made righteous due to his faith. And we too are made righteous, right with God because of Jesus. And the other thing we know from scripture is we are new creations in Jesus. Something new has happened to us. We are different. We are the beloved children of God. And God wants us to follow his will and his ways for our life because it's a good plan. It's a good way to live. It brings life and light to us and to others. And God really knows what's best for us and our families and community in the world. And to live this life in Christ of love, God gave us the Holy Spirit to help lead and guide us. So we don't have to just feel like we're on our own. We aren't. 
And so as the Hebrews said, as far as faith is what we hope for, even though we don't see it. I know there are books out and studies of people who have had near-death experiences and see people who have passed on and get a little, little taste of heaven. Most of us haven't had that experience. And so we live in that hope for, but we can trust this God. This God is faithful to his promises and calls us and loves us and wants us to love him back. Jesus even said, if you love me, follow my commands. And his main commands were always about loving others loving others that are like us, loving others who are different from us, and then the challenge of even forgiving others who may have harmed us. So on this ninth day of Pentecost, do not be afraid, little flock. We have a God who loves us, who forgives us, who calls us kids, no matter what age we are. And we are to follow him and listen to him and have the faith in what he has promised us. And he has promised us the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Have No Fear, Little Flock, verses 1, 3, and 4. to stand as we together proclaim our faith in God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment, and in places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Merciful God, let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God, 
Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. Merciful God, let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation and all who care for those in need. Merciful God, With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Merciful God, receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Please be seated as we have the opportunity to give out of God's abundance that we have received. invite you to stand for the offering prayer. God of abundance, you have set before us a bountiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to wear, bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We prepare our hearts for communion. Lord, be with us as we prepare to receive your holy gift, your own self given so that our lives of faith may be strengthened and that we may be reminded of your forgiveness. Help us to take the time to pay attention to you. In your holy name we pray, amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it, he th gave thanks, and then he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body, it is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. 
gave thanks again and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And then they, he in, encouraged them to pray the prayer he taught them to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The, the um, ushers will guide you up to communion. We will do communion starting as you come up the aisle in the center and then fill to the outside. And that's, that's the way we will also serve communion. If we had another person who would be willing to help pour wine, that would be lovely. Thank you, Tim. Um, so we invite you to um, come forward for worship, for, I mean, come forward for communion. And we also remind those who are joining us online that this is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you.
life-giving God. Through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have one announcement. Announcement is when I'm getting. Okay, so the fundraiser that we were doing for Sidewalk, we are still doing just, we're just filling in a tiny, tiny bit at the end. And if you want to order a lasagna, you may give a free will gift and tell me today because that's when I'm buying groceries is later today. And lasagna will be ready on Friday for pickup or delivery. Thank you so much. Rumor is that it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go. Excellent. A few announcements. Um, Karen Anderson, the missionary from Chile, is going to be here Tuesday night. She'll be here for worship at 6.30 and 7 o'clock. She'll talk about her missionary work in Chile. I got from Tanya the Relay for Life St. John's Warriors team raised $5,896. That's awesome. <laughs> she says, thanks for everyone's support. And we also have Ready, Set, Learn is uh, getting ready, ready and will be doing distributions on Monday and Tuesday of this week. And there, if you have any gifts or supplies, you can still give them to Tanya and she'll figure out a way to use them because she's got a lot of kids on her list. And two other announcements. The Lefsa Bakes will continue as planned and Lefsa will be sold later in the fall. But the Lutfest Dinner Committee met with team leaders and they've decided not to have the Lutfest Dinner this year. So we will bypass another year of the Lutfest Dinner. Um, so you can let others know about that. Let's stand for God's blessings for the week. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Keep Your Lamps Trimmed and Burning, verses 1 and 4. Love your neighbor.